ओम ज्ञानतिमरंध से ज्ञानाजिनीशलाकाया चक्षुरोन्मल तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमा ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी इति नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे वाचाकलतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतीता पावनेभ्य वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधार श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा ग्रेटफुल टू बी हियर थैंक यू अनुथम अप्रूव फॉर योर काइंड वर्ड्स थैंक यू योर काइंड वर्ड्स हैव प्लेस द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑन यू टू एम्पावर मी सो दैट आई कैन स्पीक समथिंग विच विल नॉट बी अ टोटल डिसअपॉइंटमेंट आफ्टर द काइंड ऑफ वर्ड्स दैट यू हैव स्पोकन समटाइम्स यू हैव अ मूवी इन विच द ट्रेलर इज वेरी गुड एंड द एक्चुअल मूवी इज अ ड <laughs> so the trailer was about you spoke about me and the actual movie is going to be what i i am so i hope it's not too much of a disappointment mm. so i seek the blessing of anuttam approval and rukmini mata ji so that i can speak today so i'll start i'll speak today on the topic of if god is in control do we really have free will and if we have free will is god really in control hmm. so i was asked this question uh when i was speaking at ivy league university in uh, about a month ago in stanford that at two months more than two months ago so the point is that when we look at the world there are so many bad things happening uh, we can see there is war there is climate change there is environmental degradation there is inflation there is humans who mismanage things in colossal ways so we may wonder is god really in control in such situations and if he is in control then are we like puppets do we really have any free will so why does this question matter so much because you know, when we relate with each other when when we are relating with each other even if we don't really care much for god but when we are relating with each other our greatest hope is that people can change for the better and our greatest fear is that people may change for the worse and if people didn't have free will if we didn't have free will then all of existence would seem meaningless mm-hmm. and if we say no this person has free will and this person did terrible things then we say okay where is god in all this situation sometimes some terrorists kill innocent people sometimes some people just go crazy and take guns and go into schools and start shooting say where is god in all this so i'll speak then this topic based on this verse from the bhagavad gita which gives a very vivid visual visual metaphor to illustrate so yatha aakasha sthit the word oh the word is not visible that's strange recording in progress so this is the verse let us try to i'll explain the meaning and we'll recite it once at least and then we'll discuss it यथा आकाशस्थि निन वायु विंड सर्वत्र गो महान इट इज वेरी पावरफुल महान एंड कैन गो एवरीवेयर द विंड कैन गो एवरीवेयर ऑल दो इट इज सिचुएटेड इन द स्काय वायु सर्वत्र गो महान तथा सिमिलरली सर्वाणि भूतानि Similarly, all living beings, tatha sarvani bhutani, 
मत स्थान मत इन मी उपधारया आर सिचुएटेड आर सस्टेन मत स्थानित्य उपधारया सो कृष्णा इज सेइंग ओवर हियर इफ यू एनविजन द स्काई टू बी लाइक एन अपसाइड डाउन बाउल देन इनसाइड द स्काई द विंड इज देयर एंड द विंड कैन मूव लेफ्ट राइट अप डाउन various directions so the movement of the wind is not restricted but the area of movement of the wind is restricted so similarly all living beings are situated in me what he means is that living beings have their free will and you could envision every one of us is covered by an upside down bowl like umbrella and within that we can move we can move left right up down but when we hit the limits of that upside down ball we can't do anything so this later on in the upanishads it is explained and the gita also it is hinted at in the gita it is stated that th- there is what is called as the kshetra the field of activity of every person so right now my kshetra is that i can control my laptop but i can't control that screen <laughs> so we all have certain level of control and within that area of control we can do what we want but that area of control is limited so so this upside down limit upside down ball in which we are all situated like our kshetra say for example we all may get angry now when a small infant gets angry the infant can only f- moves flail its hands and legs inside the crib hmm? a slightly older child and they get angry the child may pound hands and legs on the ground hmm? a older person may take some things and start throwing at him hmm? if a person is a licensed gun owner that person can go and shoot someone and they get angry if that person is the president of america they can press a nuclear button and a whole country may blow up so everybody has that vice that impurity of anger but their domain of control is different and depending on how big is their domain of control they can cause that much damage hmm? now of each of these people have their particular small or big domain of control their kshetra but beyond that kshetra they can't do anything so the president of america may be able to blow up one country but the president of america can't blow up anything on the moon or on some other planet mm-hmm. and then the when the president of america the tenure ends and that person is no longer in power uh, their kshetra which is so big immediately shrinks that person who commanded the armed forces of the most powerful army in the world according to some people at least that person can't even stop the police from raiding their own house isn't it so the kshetra the field of control can vary enormously and while a person has a large kshetra that person can do a large number of things and within those things when a person is doing something god does not interfere krishna does not interfere some people uh, krishna says upadrashta anumanta cha i am the overseer and i am the per- permitter so some people say that whatever is happening it is all done by god so how many of you agree with this statement that whatever is happening everything is done by god hmm? anyone agrees with this okay everything is done by god okay how many of you say that everything that happens is not done by god it's difficult to say that is it okay is not done by god some of you okay okay let me put another question now when when say let's take a provocative situation to illustrate this point when in the kuru assembly draupadi was dragged there to be dishonored hmm? at that time krishna came and krishna saved draupadi by offering her unlimited robe 
बट बिफोर दैट वेन दुशासन वॉज ट्राइंग टू डिसऑनर एंड डिसरोप द्रौपदी वॉज इट कृष्णा डूइंग दैट थ्रू दुशासन वॉट डू यू थिंक यस सो कृष्णा अलाउड इट बट इज नॉट कृष्णा डूइंग इट See, everything is God is the cause of all causes, not the cause of all effects. Now, what is the difference? God is the cause of all causes, sarva karana karanam, but He's not the cause of all effects. That means that if Dushasan wants to do something brutal. the strength that dushasan has dushasan is also soul and the soul actually has no control over the body the control over the body is a result of the arrangement made by the parmatma in the heart so actually his ability to control his body and use his body to control something externally that is by krishna's arrangement that means krishna is the cause of all causes in the, the cause of all causes means everything ultimately the power for it to happen comes from krishna but how that power is used that's the effect that is not determined by krishna the vedant sutra gives the example that the rains are the cause of all the vegetation that grows on the earth parjanya nanna sambhava as the bhagavad gita says without rains no vegetation will grow on the earth but the specific vegetation that grows at different places that is not determined by the rains that is determined by what has been sown over there either consciously by the person who is plowing the land or taking care of the garden or unconsciously what has just been there as seeds are just arranged by nature and the weeds are growing over there or random vegetation is growing over there so the rain without the rain nothing will grow but what grows specifically is not determined by the rain mm-hmm. so the cause of all causes is krishna not the cause of all effects everything that happens is not caused by krishna it is sanctioned by krishna now if everything that happens were done by krishna then the two problems with that first is that would leave no scope for free will we would all become like puppets in krishna in krishna's hands we are all puppets and krishna is acting through all of us now the problem with that is we are held responsible for our actions there is karma so when somebody some bad people do bad things it is krishna doing the bad things through the those people and then krishna punishing those people for doing bad things that would be horrible it would that would make god into a devil makes people do bad things and then punishes them for doing bad things so it is not that krishna is doing everything so within that kshetra within that limit the domain of the upside down umbrella that is dushasan by his dushasan had that kshetra he had that physical prowess he had that political position by which he could do certain things and both his physical prowess and his political position was there for some time and during that time he could do what he wanted but that kshetra that upside down umbrella that was not determined by him the size of it was not determined by him the length for which it survives is not determined by him and that is why if somebody becomes proud of their capacity to do things that pride is in one side a sign of ignorance is yes, we may have capacity to do a lot of things but that capacity is not in our own hands uh, we uh, so import the important thing is we do have free will and what we do with our free will is up to us so now if you consider the mahabharat another incident in the mahabharat what happens is krishna goes as the peace messenger to the kuru assembly and this is a 
sometimes we just hear the story krishna went a shanti doot but it's actually a very serious gesture what is being conveyed over here is that say now in between ukraine and russia war is going on and they may say have some peace negotiations maybe the the one some general of the russian army and some general of the uh, the ukrainian army they talk with each other or maybe their uh, minister of defense is talk with each other but suppose the ukrainian head of state goes to russia personally talk for peace seek peace that means that they are very serious the 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 the, the the power of the person who is going as a peace messenger conveys the seriousness of the peace endeavor so krishna was the most powerful person and he personally went to seek peace and when he went to seek peace krishna actually tries earnestly krishna uses in traditional niti shastra it is described that there are four ways of trying to resolve a dispute Sam, dam, bhed, and thunder. So Sam is, you know, we both have the same interests. So Krishna started that he says, both of you belong to the same dynasty. You share the same ancestors. You share the same lineage. You know, why should you fight among each other? Now each of these points I am making very briefly here. Krishna is very eloquent in his speech over there, Sam. And then what happens is, after that, there is. so he uses them alternately then he says if you do not see your shared interests do not think you will win danda he says that that danda he says what happens is arjuna has just single handedly defeated your entire army and in virat and before that arjuna has defeated the and uh, the entire army of the devatas at at the kandava and an army that had defeated the gandav the devatas the nimat kavachas arjuna has single handed defeated that so you have no chance of winning if you fight against the pandavas you will be destroyed and then krishna uses bhed bhed he says is that actually initially krishna is speaking to dhritarashtra and because dhritarashtra is the king when he speaking to dhritarashtra at that time dhritarashtra says he says you don't have to convince me i am convinced it is my son duryodhana he doesn't listen to me so then krishna turns to duryodhana and starts speaking to him so this is the next situation is dhritarashtra was on the throne but actually duryodhana had the power so you know those of you who know a little bit about indian politics before the current indian government the situation was like that there was one person in the prime minister's chair and another person in power Mm-hmm. so what happened was that krishna spoke to duryodhana and then finally krishna could see that duryodhana was not interested in listening at all so this krishna then turned to assembly all of you kuru elders you know what is good for the dynasty so if duryodhana does not see sense at least you should see sense and you should not support duryodhana for the sake of the kuru dynasty and krishna's speech was so influential that duryodhana's right hand man turned against him who was duryodhana's right hand man his brother who's his brother dushasan dushasan he said that if duryodhana doesn't listen to keshava in the mahabharat krishna is not the name krishna is not used that word keshava is used if duryodhana doesn't listen to keshava all of us should tie him up and arrest him and hand him over to keshava Duryodhana was infuriated. What happened to you? What are you doing? In speed, that that was a gesture, glaring at Duryodhana, at Dushasan. And finally, Duryodhana, Duryodhana had one policy. When this elaborate negotiation was going on, when things were turning against him, he just had one policy: walk out. Stay there, walk out. So he just walked out of the assembly. And now, Duryodhana, whatever we may say, he, he had some good qualities. You know, uh, one of Once I was asked to give a seminar in IIM on the Mahabharat, but they said don't tell us traditional black and white. Tell us a little sophisticated things. So I gave a talk on leadership lessons from Duryodhan, <laughs> <laughs> and the subtitle was how not to lead. 
<laughs> so now whatever we say actually here duryodhan had some leadership qualities he you know, how many brothers did he have 99 and they all followed him you know those of uh, you who have one or two siblings try to get them to follow you and see how difficult it is isn't it so he had some ability and dushasan had always been following him so the 98 other brothers they were confused what to do you know we always followed duryodhan because dushasan also followed him. when dushasan and duryodhan opposed what to do duryodhan has walked out they all looked at each other and one by one they all walked out and then dushasan was left all alone now all the kuru assembly saying are you going to walk your talk will you arrest duryodhan and bring him back and tie him up he looked at here he looked around and he just he just walked out and he knew duryodhan they had gone to they had duryodhan had his own favorite area of the palace he had gone there and duryodhan was sitting and duryodhan was a master manipulator so he heard dushasan's footsteps coming in now he could have got on dushasan's case how dare you betray me like this but instead what he did was he said to his brothers this keshava is a very cunning person the way he speaks he can make a fool out of anyone so his speech is very seductive and even our dear dushasan he was seduced by krishna's speech isn't it dushasan and dushasan was peeking in through the door thinking i should come in or not and what duryodhan did was he gave dushasan an opportunity to save face i didn't know you didn't turn against me this krishna's deceptive speech of him yes 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 this krishna deceived me i'm i'm not against you and dushasan came in and this way duryodhana won dushasan back on his side but what was krishna doing i was talking about the four ways of uh, delay dealing so krishna tried first sam then he thought danda danda is you will be destroyed if you fight again then then he had tried bhed and none of these worked and then finally again all of the the drashta said come back to the king come back to the uh, assembly he sent a message and durudhana came back at that time krishna offered the last what is the last one dam so sam is reconciliation so the similarity of interests danda is punish threat of punishment bhed is creating dissension and the last is danda sorry now it's dam dam is offering allurements so he said you know if you want the kingdom you just keep you keep the kingdom give the pandavas just five villages to rule and this was a remarkable concession from half the kingdom to just five villages and what is duryodhan's reply did you remember okay even i won't give as much land as needed to to put the tip of a needle through now you see as a dialogue it sounds very great how oh, but you know in terms of the context what does it mean suppose we invite someone to come for a program and they don't want to come so they make an excuse now they are making an excuse we know that they are making an excuse and they know that we know that they are making an excuse <laughs> but still there is some level of politeness where they are making an excuse or or that or that hypocrisy is the last respect that vice offers to virtue that means the, that somebody is cunning somebody is deceptive but at least they try to appear truthful so here that person is trying to make an excuse but suppose that we invite somebody for a program and they say even if i die my dead body will never come to your program you know that is not just saying no to the invitation that is like kicking the person who is invited us out of the door get out of here so duryodhan's reply was like that that he says i will not give you enough land to put even the tip of the needle through and at that time krishna became grave and he turned toward the assembly all of you O Kuru elders, you have heard the king's admission of powerlessness before his obstinate son. You have seen for yourself the obstinacy of this foolish Duryodhana. It is for you to decide 
whether you will let the fate of the kuru dynasty be determined by someone so foolish and again durudhan was afraid that krishna's words may affect everyone and then durudhan had his emergency plan what was that arrest krishna he says he had his elite regiment of soldiers he says arrest him keshava right now and they all charged in and they all charged in and krishna was completely nonchalant krishna just stood there and exhibited his vishwarupa and the sight was so dazzling so overwhelming it suddenly appeared as if his form had expanded to cover the the entire space all the directions it appeared with the storms in the wind there was thunder there were storms in the air there was thunder lightning it seemed to be earth seemed to be quaking and the sight was so overwhelming that everybody they just couldn't keep their eyes open they closed their eyes and some of them swooned and at that time the soldiers this is look at her this person because how can we arrest just fell back in horror and fear and then dhritarashtra was blind he asked, what's going on sanjay said he is showing his vishwarupa then dhritarashtra prayed to krishna can i please see your vishwarupa now krishna had no reason to show but again krishna gave him that vision removed his blindness temporarily so that at least now after seeing this massive form which no one could fight against maybe dhritarashtra would come to his senses and control duryodhana dhritarashtra saw this form and krishna displayed his form but for dhritarashtra's expression he could see that he was awestruck by the form but not awestruck enough to be able to give up his attachment to duryodhana then krishna very nonchalantly he just withdrew his form manifested in normal form and satyaki was next to him he put his hand on satyaki's shoulder and walked away <laughs> as if that thing seemed to have happened and now while walking krishna didn't even speak but he just walked away and then now everybody turned to turned to duryodhana first of all trying to arrest a peace messenger that itself was a, a heinous outrageous violation of the normal codes of conduct but on top of that is his perception had also been foiled and durudhan was stunned initially but then what happens is nanar so blind as those who refuse to see so durudhan has said actually keshav is just a magician he showed a form and confused all of us he showed some magical form and confused all of us you know actually if i had some time i could also do some yoga and get some mystical power i could also do some forms so just from no big deal he says when the war happens all this magic is not going to affect us we will defeat him so he was completely unfazed and then krishna went back the next morning and krishna went back at one level you can say krishna had gone on a peace mission and his peace mission failed so that raises a serious philosophical question can god fail what do you think can god fail well you know you don't want to say no but you can't say yes isn't it <laughs> so actually one of the names of vishnu is satya sankalpa satya sankalpa means whatever he desires whatever he resolves his sankalpa will become true so here he came to seek peace and his peace mission failed so how is vishnu satya sankalpa that is actually revealed by krishna himself earlier before the peace mission the previous night see krishna was a master tactician but duryodhana also had, had was also tactician so duryodhana you know in politics optics is quite important you know you may not be a good person but you have to look a good person hmm? so what duryodhana had done was he, he was he was actually expert at manipulating people in such a way that they would become devoted to him 
So when he had palaces built for all the hundred brothers, he arranged for Dushasan's palace to be bigger and better than his own palace. He said, you know, I love you so much. You know, I may be the eldest, but you get the best. And then his plan was, he said, when Krishna comes, when Kesho comes, I will shower him with gifts. I will shower him with so many, so much luxury, so much comfort, so much, so many gifts that he will be overwhelmed. And he will not speak against anything against me. He said, I'll offer him residence in Dushasana's palace. He said, Dushasana, you can move in my palace. And when Krishna came, what happened was, he said, Krishna, I have invited, I want you to come in. I have arranged Dushasana's palace for you. And please come and have a feast over there. And Krishna was quite, not cold, but formal. He said, one person eats at another person's house for two reasons. Either there is affection between the two of them or that person is hungry. <laughs> he said, you have consistently been averse to the Pandavas and I am not hungry. <laughs> so I will not come to your place. And then he went to the, whose house did he go to? Vidura. Now this is a very strong statement because Vidura was a stepbrother and Vidura actually didn't have a palace and Vidura was not just a stepbrother a stepbrother who was out of favor with if not the king at least the king's son who was actually in power with Duryodhana so Vidura's, palace, Vidura's residence was not a very opulent residence but Krishna went there and this was Krishna had arrived the previous evening and the next morning was going to be the Peace, peace message, peace negotiations. So at that evening, when Vidura was with Krishna, Vidura said, Oh Krishna, you know, why have you come here? You know that Duryodhana is not going to listen to you. And my heart trembles at the thought of what will happen in that assembly. You know, Duryodhana had been so insolent that he had actually he told his plan. And, you know, I will seduce Krishna and if I can't seduce him, then I will arrest him. And when Bhishma had heard this, he had got so angry. He said, what, have, what wrong has Keshav done ever to you? So he has always been fair to you. And Keshav's brother has trained you in fighting. The Yadu dynasty has never been anything but good to you. How can you arrest a member of the Yadu dynasty? I will not even sit here and hear any such obnoxious plans. And he walked out. So, Bhishma was actually a very level-headed person. Bhishma had not yelled, had not exploded at Duryodhan, even when they, Duryodhan and his gang had tried to dishonor Draupadi. But when Bhishma exploded like this, at that time, everyone thought that that would have a deterrent effect on Duryodhan and Duryodhan would abandon his plan. Even Duryodhan looked a little chastened. But Vidura was suspicious. As Vidura was saying, that, you know, Krishna, Dhritarash, Duryodhan has a plan to arrest you. And Vidura said, you know, in that assembly, I have already seen one humiliation, the humiliation of Draupadi. He says, Krishna, if I have to see another humiliation there, I will not be able to live. If they try to arrest you, I will die. At that time, Krishna replied. and He said, I know that Duryodhan is not going to listen to me. And I have come here only for the sake of the Pandavas. To let the world know that the cause of the war was not the Pandavas. It was the Kauravas. It was Duryodhana. So it was this Sankalpa which was successful. Krishna's intention 
at one level was to seek peace. You know, Krishna is so expert that simultaneously he can be pursuing many things. Now, and it was not that Krishna was simply acting. If you look at Krishna's speech, Krishna was extremely earnest in seeking peace. But by Duryodhan making this impressive seeming dialogue, you know, I will not give him the tip of a line to pass through. Uh, tip, uh, tip of the line enough to, for the tip of a needle to go through. What happened was, actually Duryodhan fully, willingly played into Krishna's plan. What was Krishna's plan? Let the world see Duryodhana's defiance. Let the world see Duryodhana's obstinacy. And therefore, the blame for the war will not come on the Pandavas. It will come on Duryodhana. So, Krishna's plan is not always what we may think is Krishna's plan. So Krishna's purpose is never foiled. But what Krishna's purpose is, is very difficult for us to know. Hmm? And Bhishma Pitama himself says this, when he's in his arrow bed and he's talking with Yudhishthir, he says that, Tasyanu vihito rajan, he says, Naveda jigisya, that nobody can know the plan of the Lord. And that is why when some bad people do bad things, I think, is it Krishna's plan being foiled? Is how can, how is, what, is Krishna, what is Krishna doing? What is Krishna thinking? What is Krishna planning? Why is Krishna letting this happen? Actually, there are people who have free will and by their... Now, I talk about the Kshetra. That Kshetra, that person may have a certain level of influence. That happens by their personal karma. The karma that they have gotten in the past by which they have a certain level of influence. And with that level of influence, they can use or abuse that power. And when they abuse that, it may seem that they are throwing a wrench in Krishna's plan. Something Krishna wants to do something good, and they are disrupting it. But Krishna's plan is remarkably resilient. Krishna is remarkably resourceful. Even if somebody does something bad, something wrong. Krishna can modify his plan and keep moving things forward in the way he wants. So it's like, suppose we are using GPS. And on GPS, the GPS is guiding us, turn right. And then we turn left. And what happens? Does GPS say, you disobeyed me, get lost. Now, what does GPS do? Immediately reroutes. And she was okay, now you go this way. So Krishna is like the ultimate GPS. So people have the power to take wrong turns. And some people take wrong turns out of ignorance. They just don't know better. And some people may take wrong turns because of defiance. They just don't care for Krishna. But no matter who takes what wrong turns, Krishna can keep his plan operational. So that's why all this... We see what happens is, I'll conclude with two points and then we can have a few questions. That we all have free will and we are responsible for our actions. Others have free will and they are responsible for their actions. And sometimes when others misuse their free will, they can create trouble for us. When they create trouble for us, is it that Krishna wants that trouble for us? Well, maybe, maybe we don't know what Krishna wants. Does Krishna want them to act that way? Not necessarily. But Krishna is allowing them to act that way. And Krishna has his own purpose. So, rather than fixating on why is this person being so unreasonable? Why is this person being so stupid, so foolish, so cruel? Sometimes we just can't figure that out. That is, just, people have their free will and sometimes because of whatever influence it might be, they may misuse their free will. So at that time, rather than fixating on their actions, we need to see what is our duty. What is the right thing for us to do? How can we act in the best possible way in that situation? In the Ramayana, when Kai Kai is uh, influenced by Mantara, and she pressures the Dasharat Maharaj into sending Ram into exile and making Dasharat, making Bharat the prince regent. 
At that time, Lakshman is furious. And Lakshman wants to uh, lead a coup, a rebellion against Dasharath. He says, Ram, you deserve to be the king and I will support you, become the king. He said that, how could, now this is an elaborate conversation, but I'll focus on the main part here. And he says that, how, how could Kai Kai have done something like this, you know? He said, how could she, what harm have you ever done to her? How could she have done like this to you? Lakshman is furious. And Ram says, don't speak badly about Kai Kai. You know how much she loved me. Her love for me was like the flow of the Ganga river. It was pure, it was continuous, it was unstoppable. So Dashrath is still angry. He says, that's what I can't understand. How did the Ganga dry up in one night? <laughs> So at that time, Ram becomes grave and he says that that's why when I heard her speak those words, I understood that this must be the working of destiny. When some reasonable person suddenly starts behaving unreasonably, some person who just starts behaving in a very troublesome way and there seems to be no resolution, then we see that this is the will of destiny. This is the will of destiny. See, Kai Kai is not considered an evil person. She is, she is not evil, but she is weak. And she is misled by Mantara. So Ram does not, Ram does not hold it against her. And he says, this is the will of destiny. So Lakshman says, it is only cowards who accept injustice by calling it as destiny. Says, Heroes fight against injustice. So you should fight for your rights and gain the kingdom. And Ram is still grave and he says, for me, ascending to the throne was not a matter of my right. It was a matter of my duty. He says, it was my father's will that I ascend the throne and as a service to him I was doing that. If now my service to my father requires me to go to the forest, I will do that. So what did Lord Ram do? He focused on what was his duty. Now in this case, what did he do? He said, okay, to the will of destiny, let me go to the forest. But later on, when Sita was abducted, Ram did think, oh, you know, it must be the will of destiny. That Sita is abducted. So maybe I was too attached to my wife. Maybe this is an arrangement destined to detach me from my wife. So let her go with Ravan. That would have been a horrendous dereliction of his duty. So there Ram considered, what is my duty? My duty is, as a husband, I have to protect my wife. And therefore, he arranged an army and fought against her. So when somebody does something terrible, the point is, that instead of simply fixating on their actions, we focus on our responsibility, our duty. And we focus on doing that duty. Yes, it is not that God, it is not that because Krishna has allowed that to happen, therefore I have to passively accept it. And it is not because Krishna has allowed it to happen, therefore I have to aggressively go against it. Yeah. So in every action that happens, there is that person's free will and there is Krishna's plan. So we, if that person is reasonable, we try to reconcile and adjust things. But if the person is not reasonable, then we focus on what is Krishna's plan. What can I do to make things better? How can I act responsibly in this situation? So that's the first part. And the second part which I'll conclude is that, see when somebody misuses their free will, and they make things worse. I discuss what to do. But what happens if we misuse our free will? And we do something terrible. Is it that Krishna wanted us to do that? If we, we, you know, we speak some harsh words and, you know, we ruin a very important relationship with someone or we succumb to some temptation and it creates a whole chaos in our life. At that time, we can't say that Krishna wanted that to happen. It was our weakness. It was our mistake. And at that time, what do we do? At that time, it's important for us to understand 
that although our mistake i mean is not god's plan god's plan can work even through our mistake just because i made a mistake does not mean krishna's plan will stop working now krishna's plan is still working krishna's plan can work even through our mistakes not just in spite of our mistakes but even through our mistakes we know the story of dakshay patra where uh, when the pandavas were in the forest they wanted to serve the sages and the brahmins who were there so they uh, got the dish which was inexhaustible and now you know in our house if we have some if we have some silverware or some golden golden plates if we serve food in them if we use them then we clean them very very carefully and then we keep them uh, carefully uh, in this case this particular plate was more valuable than any silverware or goldenware for them and how is it that when draupadi everybody finished their meal and draupadi finished her meal somehow while cleaning that plate one little morsel of food remained now was it draupadi's mistake was it one of the people who assisted draupadi there was it was their mistake but when draupadi when when the sages came over there and asked for food and durvasa muni came and all the pandavas were panicky what do we do now and draupadi is the person who exhibited great presence of mind she says we pray to krishna and sometimes what happens is we pray to krishna for solving a problem and the problem seems to become worse so he is praying to krishna krishna please help us in this danger and krishna immediately appears over there and he says hey draupadi i am extremely hungry please give me some food and draupadi was aghast first i am not able to provide food to all these sages and now krishna is asking for food i can't provide food to him also so sometimes our prayer seems to be making the problem worse but what happens is he says oh krishna I'm, i don't have any food he says no just see i am hungry just see if something is there and then she goes and she sees actually there this little morsel of shark which is left on the plate and she comes krishna this is all that i have this is give it to me and krishna takes that and eats that and what happens is when he eats that food not only he feels contented but all the sages durvas and his thousands of disciples they all feel they they, they start, feel so contented they start belching and often this is the sto- this is the focus of the story that how by satisfying krishna everyone is satisfied but the another point in the story that for draupadi it might have been a mistake that that particular morsel of food remained on the rakshay patra but krishna use that very mistake for his plan so no in krishna's plan no mistake is fatal no mistake by us is fatal no misdeed by anyone else is fatal and that is why as devotees we never lose hope we never lose hope because krishna's plan is always operational our mistakes others misdeeds others mistakes our misdeeds our misdeeds other misdeeds our mistakes other mistakes whatever the combination may be through it all krishna's plan is always acting now krishna's plan may not be what we think is krishna's plan krishna's plan was not coming as a shanti doot to seek peace it was to demonstrate to the world who is the cause of war and that plan was successful so it may appear that a particular plan is not working but krishna's plan may be bigger than what we think is his plan and that plan will be working so what we do is whatever free will we have we try to use it as responsibly as we can and if somebody is misusing their free will we try to make them see sense if we don't we just focus on using our free will properly if we have made some mistakes in our past we acknowledge the mistakes but we don't beat ourselves up for them we don't become discouraged or devastated by that think okay what is how can i act responsibly right now what is the thing that i can do right now to make things better and in that way krishna bhakti krishna consciousness is actually a consciousness of constant hope and constant energy constant hope because even if we have made terrible mistakes krishna's plan is still operational and constant energy because each one of us has a place in krishna's plan and we all can play our part 
in Krishna's plan and thus we bring goodness, we bring bhakti in our heart and we bring goodness in the world around us. It may be in a small capacity, it may be in a big capacity. That we do not know. But we all can play our part in making ourselves better and in making our corner of the world better. Despite our mistakes or others' mistakes. And that is the vision. Wherever is Krishna, wherever is Arjuna, there there will be victory. When the Bhagavad Gita says at the end, 1878, that does not mean that every battle the Pandavas will win. Even after that declaration, Arjuna lost Abhimanyu. Bad things did happen. But ultimately Krishna's plan was successful. And thus, the Bhagavad Gita's mission ends with Arjuna filled with hope, filled with energy. And similarly, we can also be filled with hope. Hope means that what is happening, some, it is moving towards something good. Energy means that I can play a part in the moving of things toward good. And in that way, we all can have this positive and positivity in our lives by internalizing the wisdom of bhakti into our heads and our hearts. So I'll summarize. I spoke today about the interaction between human will and divine will. If we have free will, does God really control everything? And if God controls everything, do we really have free will? So I started by talking about if bad people do bad things, is God doing it through them? No. So then how is it? The, the vision of the upside down bowl. That, with, just as the wind moves within the domain of the sky, we all have our kshetra. And within that, we have free will. Within that, we can do whatever we want. And Krishna does not interfere. Now, what if somebody does bad things? Does Krishna, what does Krishna do about it? Krishna has his plan and it goes on even through people's bad choices. In that connection, I talked about Krishna's peace mission to Hastinapur. And how Krishna was earnest using Sam, Dam, Bhed and Danda. And Duryodhana's arrogance, because of Duryodhana's arrogance, he rejected Krishna's plan. And did Krishna fail? Yes, in one plan, to establish peace, he failed. But in another plan, to show who was the cause of war, Krishna could not have been more successful. Duryodhana fully played into Krishna's hands. So even when Krishna's plan seems to be foiled, there is some other plan of Krishna which is still working. And with that understanding, how do we see others' mistakes or others' misdeeds? We focus not on what they are doing and why they are doing it. If they can't see, if they don't see sense, we focus on what is the right thing for us to do. So, uh, so uh, Ram did not fixate on Kaikai Kai and why she was acting in such a terrible way. Focused on what is my duty in this situation. And if we ourselves commit some mistakes, we don't beat ourselves up. We know that our mistakes may not be Krishna's plan, but Krishna's plan can work even through our mistakes. Draupadi is leaving a little morsel of food on the Akshay Patra was what Krishna used for demonstrating a devotion, a divine truth and solving a problem. And thus, if we understand how we always have free will and we always have a part in Krishna's ever ongoing plan, and that is a vision which can fill us with hope and energy, irrespective of what people are doing around us, uh, good or bad, bad things people may be doing around us, irrespective of even whatever bad things we ourselves may have done. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Any comments, Prabhu? Uh -huh. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, so you spoke about how Krishna is the cause of all causes, but he's not the effect. Um, I'm trying to understand this, and the Bhagavad Gita says that, you know, living entities are conducted under the three modes of material nature, and, you know, the three modes of, na of material nature are essentially is external energy. So how do... The three modes of material nature are? What was the last sentence you said? No, his external... Uh, the, external the three modes of material nature is part of his external energy. Okay. So how to understand... Um, because his external energy is inextricably linked to him. So how to understand uh, him okay. being not the effect when okay, uh, the question. effect could be caused by his material energy, which okay, is that's inextricably a good question. linked. Good question. See, if Krishna is the controller of the modes and everything is done by the modes, then isn't it that it is Krishna who is doing everything? He is the cause of all effects. Not exactly. 
although it is said that we that everything is done by the moods but still krishna speaks the bhagavad gita and tells arjuna do this and don't do this or rather than krishna if you do this this will happen if you do this this will happen these are the choi- choices before you these will be the consequences and now you decide what you want to do if we had no no decision making agency at all then there was no point in krishna speaking the bhagavad gita is it if everything is done by the moods then irrespective of whether krishna speaks the bhagavad gita or not everything will be done by the moods what is the use of krishna speaking the bhagavad gita so there is a, it is not that simple what krishna means over there is that prakrite kriyamanaani gunai karmani sarvasha he says when said 327 the rada was also see krishna says everything is done by the moods but as i said krishna tells arjuna now do as you desire and krishna that's 1863 1873 arjuna says that i will do your will so we do have agency now this is reconciled so one extreme is we don't do anything and the other extreme is we do everything i could say pendulum in between in 1816 krishna says the traivam sati kartaram atmanam kevalam tu yah pashyatya akrta buddhitvan nas pashyati durmati he says therefore one who thinks i am the sole doer is an illusion we are doers but we are not the sole doers i may want to speak right now but if i suddenly get some thaw- sore throat or something i may want to speak but i'll not be able to speak so i am certainly i want to speak that's how i'm able to speak so definitely i am a doer but i am not the sole doer and the point is not oh you could always say that if we don't do anything why should if we are not the doers of anything why should we do anything at all why should we be responsible why should we do our duty the point is if i think i am the sole doer of everything then i will claim the credit for the results but krishna is telling arjuna there is a bigger plan in operation over here and you are playing one part in it and you play your part responsibly don't think you are going to be the cause of the death that of bishma and drona it is they are killed by their own actions the kauravas are killed by their own actions and you can be only an instrument but you have to choose whether you want to be an instrument or not now you can be a cho- instrument of krishna we can be instrument of krishna or we can be instrument of maya we can be instrument in the mode of goodness we can be instrument in the, we can be we can be controlled by the mode of goodness we can be controlled by the mode of passion we can be controlled by the mode of ignorance the choice is up to us it's like when i was in australia i was asked this question that you know if god wants us to choose make good choices then why are there so many bad options in the world <laughs> isn't it <laughs> so i answered that's how it is in every multiple choice exam <laughs> there are five options there's one right and four wrong options now among these five options only the person has to choose but if the person chooses the wrong option the person can't blame the teacher no you only give the wrong option i chose it it is you it is i didn't fail it is you failed me they can't say that the range of options was provided but within that range of options it is the student who chose and therefore the student is responsible so even if we say everything is done by the modes we do choose which mode to be influenced by and that's why we are responsible okay thank you so yes hari bol uh, you explain that every action or everything is happening by the grace of lord krishna no i didn't say that i didn't say that i said everything is happening by the sanction of the lord not the grace of the lord when cruel people do cruel things it is not the grace of the lord we can see that there is there is the mercy of krishna somewhere in this action ha- but however how he could help us to control our free wills okay how will krishna help us to control our free will right you mean control means use use properly is that what you mean by you control i mean free wills we do whatever we like to do but there should be a control or grace from him to do such action either it okay. is bad or good okay so we have our free will and we can do whatever we want so how do, how can krishna enable us to control our free will right so so that we can we can actually act wisely i can make good choices correct yes 
That is what the whole process of bhakti is. Bhakti is the process by which Krishna gives us his mercy, his grace. So somebody may have conditionings by which they get, they are pulled in particular directions. So it's like somebody is in, in, an, in an ocean and suddenly this is the ocean, this is the vast ocean. The land is over here, they want to go in this direction. But suddenly a huge wave is coming hmm? and that wave is sweeping that person away. Now that person, no matter how strong or determined they are, the power of the wave will sweep them away. But if that person can get an anchor and that anchor is heavy and unshakable and they just hold on to that anchor, then that wave will come, the wave will hit them, but they won't be swept away by that wave. So that anchor is the process of bhakti. So the waves will come. Going back to the example of the modes, the modes will hit us. But mamcha yog vibhicharena bhakti yogena sevati. In 1426 Krishna says, if you practice bhakti, bhakti determinedly, you can go beyond the modes. The waves will come, but if you hold on to the anchor, then we will not be swept away by the modes. And now the anchor is there, the anchor won't be swept away. But it is we who have to take responsibility to hold on to that anchor. And that responsibility to hold on to the anchor is our sadhana bhakti. To the extent, when we have the opportunity to remember Krishna, to the extent we remember him diligently, to the extent we are attentive when, when we are hearing class, to the extent we are really praying when we are worshipping Krishna. In all these times, we are holding on to the anchor tightly. We are practicing having a, we are practicing having a firm grip on the anchor. And then, when the waves hit us, when the lower modes hit us, when the temptations hit us, we won't get swept away. So by using our free will properly, during our sadhana, to hold on to the anchor of Krishna, we will get the capacity to use our free will properly at other times also. Okay, thank you. Okay. How much time do we have? Okay, sure, thank you. Thank you Prabhu for a wonderful class. Uh, the kind of choices we make in our life or in a given situation or like Duryodhana made the choices of defying, you know, towards Krishna and, you know, using his free will of area. Are those not free will or the choices are dominated by the past conditioning or the destiny? Okay. Are those not free will? Uh, what a person is using is... is yeah, I got the question. Even with destiny, more yes. or sanction. Yes, so are our... When we make some choices, even when we make bad choices, are they not determined by our past karma, past conditionings? Uh, mm, yes and no. See, our past conditionings, they come as propositions. Do this, do this, do this. You know, if somebody has always been short-tempered, hmm? and you know, you have, it's, it's like all children cry. But when some baby, all babies cry, but when some babies cry, it appears that they are going to bring the whole house down. Hmm? So, the different children, some, some babies are looking out of the crib and it seems they are thinking, when will I take over the house? <laughs> it's like that. So, some people may have a short temper. Some children may have a short temper, some adults may have a short temper. And because of that short temper, they, whenever anybody provokes them, they will get angry. Do they have free will? Well, at that time, it may be true, because of the past conditionings, they cannot resist the urges when they come. Hmm? So in that sense, it's true that our past conditionings may have taken away our free will. However, the urges don't hit us with the same degree of strength all the time. Even if we can't resist the urges, we can persist between the urges. Even if we can't resist the urges. You know, when I get angry, you know, I just speak terrible words to people. And I can't control that. Maybe I can't. I'm not saying that everybody can justify that anger and I can't control it. But even if it were true, 
But we are not burning with that same level of anger 24 hours a day. During the rest of the time, what are we doing? Are we speaking kindly? Are we trying to purify ourselves? Are we practicing bhakti diligently? If we are doing that, that space between the urges is the space where we always have free will. Suppose somebody is an alcoholic and they just cannot give up drinking. But what does it mean? It is not that they are drinking 24 hours a day. They may, get, they may say, I, I get an urge every one hour. Okay, fine. Maybe when the urge comes, you can't stop it. But between that one hour, you have space. So we do always have free will. And between the urges, if we are making healthy choices, if we are trying to do things which will strengthen us, and bhakti practice is the best way to strengthen ourselves, then gradually what will happen is, we will start winning over those urges. The urges may still come, but slowly we'll start being able to resist them, tolerate them, and eventually transcend them. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Prabhu. Okay, thank you. You want to say? Please. No, no, please. <clears throat> Prabhu told the story of a man who was a thief. Many of you know the story, but I think it illustrates this point nicely. So, he, Prabhupada tells the story of a man who was a thief, and he made a living by stealing things. So he went on pilgrimage with a bunch of other pilgrims, and at night when everyone went to sleep, because he had this strong urge to steal, he, was stuck, he took everybody's bags. But because he knew it was wrong, and he was on a pilgrimage, instead of keeping the bags, he just was moving them from place to place. So he couldn't stop himself from the initial urge of stealing the bag, but he stopped from the point of taking it for himself. So he's stealing bags, but put it, okay, I stole this bag, I can't help it, but I'll put it there. And I, okay, I'm going to steal this bag, ah, but I can put it there. So I think that's the part of it too, that when you say the urges come, like your example of anger, maybe we get so uncontrollably angry, but if we're consciously trying to control that, we, we bring down, maybe we normally get angry for 10 minutes. If we work at it, it's, it's eight minutes. Or it's, we don't say the worst words. We say less bad words. You know, and then we get to the point, maybe we, we control ourselves. We walk out of the room before we say the bad words. And, and slowly, slowly, I think that's also a yeah. part of our process of bhakti. Thank you. That's wonderful. And as one devotee was telling me that he had a lot of anger issues. So he found a solution. And he said that every day I have decided my anger time. <laughs> <laughs> what he meant was that every day he, he goes alone in his room for 15 minutes. And he just lets out steam, screaming at the top of his voice. But he's not yelling at anyone else. He just gets the steam out and then he feels calm and then he deals with the issue. Zaradhi, what he was telling me that, you know, he just, as soon as he picks up his phone, he has to click the browser and he has to visit some website. He just can't stop it. Just, you know, click, 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 click. So he said, I try, I'll not do this. But he says, the first thing when he wakes up, on his, wakes up, he picks up his phone, he has to click. So what he did was, he said that, he, he arranged some like a filter by which he had like 25 devotional sites. And he would, he had to click, he would just click among those 25 sites. So, <laughs> so, so we may not be able to control the action, but we can control the range of the action. So that's what he said. Yeah, the thief example might seem funny, but it is actually a practical example. We have to do something, but we can control the range of what we do. Okay, thank you. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, thank you so much, Prabhu, for such a wonderful class and insights. I have one question. Uh, when you're explaining about the Shetra example, that uh, that is one kind like limiting or uh, creating some boundaries for us in one sense. So, uh, Krishna, uh, it appears Krishna controls the outcome at a broader level, not the minute level. It appears like that, meaning, like you were saying also, by giving the free motion, by giving the freedom to act in certain limits or boundaries, that means he's not... Uh, making sure that we are doing this particular way versus this particular way, but a broader plan. Uh, is, is that a right conclusion or uh, any flaws with that conclusion? Okay. 
Now, is it that Krishna controls the bigger actions and not the smaller actions? That is difficult to say. It is... Um, at one level, Krishna's control extends everywhere. But at another level, Krishna lets the material world function according to its laws. Om Purnamada Purnamidam. Now there's that saying that what is the best management? The best management is everything seems to be managed and no manager is seen. The manager doesn't have to constantly keep running around, do this, do this. So Krishna has arranged the world in such a way that the things in this world function according to material cause and effect. And is there Krishna's intervention over there? Krishna can intervene. But Krishna has set up the system of material cause and effect. Hmm. And what is the uh, Krishna doesn't intervene directly in that. Now, when the devotees had done their uh, the first Rathyatra happened in San Francisco in 1968, then the devotees in London decided to do Rathyatra. And when they made they decided to do something bigger. So they made a huge uh, chariot. But somehow they did not increase the size of the wheels proportionately. So when the chariot uh, was going, it went for a little distance, and then after that the wheels collapsed. It's a PR disaster. And then the devotees Gurudas wrote to Prabhupada. He said, Prabhupada, did the Rath collapse because of our poor devotion? And Prabhupada said, it collapsed because of your poor engineering. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is, we don't have to bring Krishna into every action. Hmm? When there is a there is straightforward example for things, sorry, straightforward explanation for things, we go with the straightforward explanation. Now, Krishna's plan can act even through that. So, is Krishna controlling everything or at what level Krishna is controlling? Well, it's very difficult to discern that. Rather than trying to, Krishna controls everything in the sense that the whole system of cause and effect is arranged by him. Now, does Krishna intervene in particular cause and effects? He can. But does he have to? He doesn't have to. Does Krishna make his plan work through this cause effect system? Yes, he does. As devotees, we focus not so much on how, how, how Krishna is controlling or how much Krishna is controlling. We focus on how we can be serving. That's the focus. So Prabhupada says, hey, it is your poor engineer, work on it and improve it in the future. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki, Nitai Gaur Premanande.